Hello everyone, I'm Tim here again. I'm going to continue on with this table here. Um, enable our cheats real quick. Um, so, I kind of think I wouldn't mind finding, trying to, well first find the chords I'm thinking. But I'm tired of moving around so slow. I'm kind of partial to uh, movement speed hacks and stuff like that. I'm um, even getting the jump height a little better because that base jump is pretty ridiculous. I can't even, yeah, I guess it's kind of realistic, but I do feel like I should be able to jump on that and not have to vault it. So that's what we're going to work on next. Um, So generally for a, um, trying to find chords, you usually want to find a ladder. I don't, I think the closest thing we've got to a ladder is a chain here. But I don't think we're allowed to go down there yet. I think it's a later chapter in the game that it'll actually let me get down into the area where there is a chain that I can climb up and down. Um, so the next best thing would be like, oh, no, there's a chain. Hey, hey. Okay, so yeah, usually when trying to find chords, um, just because it will cut out the other chords since they're not changing. Um, they might change a little bit, but not necessarily enough to really make a huge difference so in this case we can go ahead and find our chords here now one thing to keep in mind um, with chords just because we're sitting still and we don't really see that we're moving um, it still could be changing a little bit so it does get into an area where I mean initially uh, you know I might try and do an unchanged value scan um, with it unpaused just to try and cut out more values um, because it's not uncommon to get crashes when trying to freeze uh, chords because we will get a lot of values um, just because a there's various other aspects of the um, character model that kind of need to stay locked in and so they'll have their own chords that are moving with this um, the camera itself you know um, just a lot of different things and thus when we start freezing the stuff we can easily freeze something that will lock up the game or crash the game or something like that so um, first initial try I generally do want to try and cut out as much as what wouldn't be it as possible before going too far but at some point we may have to deal with more values if we have trouble finding it um, so to get started here, we're going to go with, um, chords will definitely be a float. Um, that's the only other thing it might be is a double. Um, but I am yet to ever have a game where it wasn't a float. Um, again, we're going to go with simple values only because it's, you know, ne you know, it really shouldn't ever be any kind of major exponent thing. Um, you know, an extreme number of decimal places or anything like that. So we'll do our... Unknown initial value scan. Go up a little bit. Increase. 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 Go ahead and do some of these. Oh, yeah, that cuts a lot of values. Wow. Usually it takes way longer to get stuff trimmed down to anything below a thousand, even. Um, Now we're not really seeing any changes with the. Did cut out ten there, but um, another way is just to do very slight changes. Oh, I guess you can't see what I'm doing on screen. Um, so I've just been going up and down this chain. Um, that's about all you really need to know. Um, so another thing we can do 
is just do very slight changes because prior to this I've been kind of doing more, you know, drastic up and down. Um, and then one other thing we can do is like, so we can look up, but then go down just a touch. And then that'll help us cut out the camera so we're not finding stuff for that. And then look down, go up just a touch. And then that way we can kind of and even do the same with the camera. Just so that way, in case the camera is actually opposite to where it's, you know, going down when we look up and up when we look down kind of thing, we can kind of cut some of that out. So I think we're at a pretty good point here to start messing with things. Um, We are seeing a lot of values around that 300, um, give or take a little bit. So I'm willing to bet it's going to be something associated with that or something close to that. So I'm going to skip messing with some of these values that aren't anywhere near that. And then just see if because it should lock us into where when we when I try and go up or down, it just won't let me. Um, one thing with dealing with chords, just because I have had times in the past where it gets a little goofy, um, I generally don't delete stuff right off the bat. I'll generally just kind of move stuff around and keep track of where it is. That had an effect for a second there, it looked like. That's kind of part of the reason for not wanting to delete stuff either, because something there was somewhat interesting, but I don't know why it kind of stopped. There we go. Now we got something locking us in. So let's go ahead and cut those. Control X and then Control V up here. Keep moving them a little easier. That is definitely something you will see some discussion on. Um, I know a lot of people would say this is Z, um, but to me, I actually play with inverted Y axis, which is always looking up and down. So I, you know, to me, up and down is Y. And the way I understand it is, if you go back to the old like 2D platformers, say like um, you know Super Mario Brothers or you know Mario Brothers or something like that, it was just X and Y, and X was you know across the screen and Y was up and down. Um, now some, you can actually see how it's coded in sometimes where for some it is more the Z chord since this one has an ending address of C. I'd almost say that, you know, the developers would call this um, Z. But for me, I still always call this Y. Um, so we can go ahead and see what access is this. Sometimes can get a little goofy just because so much will access the cores all at once. So we definitely want to make sure we stop that. Come in here. Yeah, we got quite a bit of stuff Ac accessing that one. Um, another thing we can check here is see if Maybe this is within our same structure. I'm kind of doubting it on this one. Oh, wow. It actually is. That is super surprising. Because 
usually it'll be like its own little structure, you know, a vector structure kind of thing. So then the next question is, which direction does this go? Yeah, so I would say likely the developers, you know, are saying this is X, this is Y, and this is Z, but I disagree with that. Um, so this is just how I'm going to code it in for me. If we freeze those two, we shouldn't be able to move now, yeah. So those are definitely our cords. So, of course, you know, you're welcome to call this Y. I mean, it, you know, if you disagree with me, you know, there's people can have different, you know, opinions, and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, but again, just going back to the old games, I would still say up and down is Y. Um, and the new, you know, and the new coordinate was going into the game. You know, that 3D aspect of it is what changed and added the Z chord. And again, given that even in this game they call looking up and down, you know, Y invert. I just I've never understood why they'll code it this way, but then call this Y later. You know, <laughs> it's just kind of an odd thing. Um, and this may just be it's probably actually more with the engine than the actual developers of this particular game. So now we've got our chords here. Um, so to find like a movement speed hack, we've got a couple of different ways we can do this. Um, so to come out some of the results, um, we can check to see what actually writes to this. And then we can see what actually writes when we move. Um, so one of the things we can do is, A, of course, we can try and track down an actual movement speed multiplier that the engine uses or the game uses. Um, but we can also find our deltas. Um, and delta in uh, mathematics is just change in. Um, usually it's denoted by like a triangle symbol. Um, so our, you know, like x core delta would just be change in x. Or, yeah, change in x. Um, ooh. Sure looks like that is one of our deltas right there, or at least the delta being pulled off of the stack after it was written to. Minus 5, 8. Um, actually, we probably ought to see what goes through this first. Yeah, it looks like an awful lot goes through this. Um, and it is not uncommon to kind of see, like you can almost see there where you've got some stuff that is constantly being written to. It matches our chords, and it's pretty close to how it's within that structure, I would. Yeah, maybe not. But pretty close to the structure, so it probably is related to player chords, but it's just not the actual player chords. Um, this is the only one that, yeah, this is the one that is actually our chords here. But we can still use a condition, a start condition, what is it, ESI, <coughs> to cut out some of this stuff. <coughs> we won't do that. Uh, 
ought to be more than enough. What I'm going to actually do is start pressing the button, so this way hopefully I'm moving when we come into this. You know, even though I'm not moving yet, but it may, hopefully it will be the game is registering that and going to kind of trigger it like I am moving. Um, so here we got, yeah, it's, it still is. See, a lot of these, when they start dealing with vectors, you will actually see that, you know, the pack scholar um, commands being used, but this one is still a bit older, so it's used in the, uh, SS commands here. Updating core, yeah, so. So one easy way would just be to slap a multiplier in right here. Um, we'd have to do it in three places. And really, we wouldn't even have to do that. We could start up here and then just modify, you know, the EV, um, EVP minus 5.4, 5.0, and 4C. And that would give us a movement speed multiplier um, so I am going to start with storing this uh, instruction address just for a little bit so we can get to that real easy even if I close some windows I don't mean to um, but I want to see if I can track this down because if we can find a multiplier for these values um, that'll give us one value to inject to and change and then a lot of times once we find that spot um, nearby that address and also even in with you know nearby in that code region we might find a multiplier for because um, certainly it'll be like when we're crouched there will be one oh, yeah there it is so when, they're, when we're crouched there's probably one multiplier when we're sprinting there's a different multiplier and then when we're just walking there's another multiplier and then probably swimming and you know, different multipliers for all kinds of different things. Um, so if we can find the first multiplier, uh, that'll get us closer to finding the others. Um, of course, just actually multiplying our deltas when they get added, that is a super easy way because it will multiply everything. Um, but actually finding the proper multipliers will give us the ability to have still have a slightly slower crouch speed but then maybe have sprinting you know way faster and then walking a little faster and you know we can actually fine-tune all of those based on what we want so generally finding the proper multiplier that the engine uses um, is a little better but not completely necessary so we got Five four five zero and four C. And then one thing um, I hadn't really discussed it, but when dealing with a stack, you do gotta watch to make sure because if you got a bunch of push and pops um, going on, each one of those just changes the stack a little bit. But luckily, with they use an EVP, that's um, the extended base pointer, I believe is what you call that. Um, that doesn't automatically update, so it would actually have to set EVP just like it would any one of these registries, just like this, to actually change it. Um, so that does, with they use an EVP instead of ESP, it does make life a little easier. Because if it was ESP, we'd have to every one of these that you know say these were used in ESP we'd have to kind of go through this and do the math and double check to see if it's the right spot or not that eventually turns into you know minus five four down there Where that's some kind of multiplier, maybe not what we're looking for, but I don't know, because yeah, we just gotta move and move and then add, oddly enough. And we'll probably find lots of things within threes. Just be 
because this is all going to be kind of dealing with vectors more than likely. And these functions usually do get pretty big. It's an interesting string to find there. Store that later down the road here we might poke around inside maybe this call and see what's going on. I wonder if that has something to do with collision. So we got EVP54 there. Yeah, no, it's five four five zero. I wish I kind of saved that. Yeah, but it, yeah, it was five four five zero and four C. Um, I haven't seen EVP change. Doesn't mean I didn't miss it, possibly, but. sure what's going on there. There's five zero. Now uh, it's just maybe other chords, yeah. We got the C four, C eight, and C C. the main function here and it's gonna skip over a lot of this um I think I really swear I used to automatically save the um I set code Of course, another method we could try is the um, dissect data tool. Um, because, hey, we've already seen that a lot of stuff is in this same structure. Um, this one seems to be using a very simple structure. Yeah, wow, that is a lot of code that calls this. Not surprising, though. So we could go that route and just see if we're, you know, somewhere around here. Um, probably be a little further along, but essentially somewhere between these two, you know, we might have some values that wind up looking right for a multiplier and just have to play with them and see if we can find it. Um, and then there are ways, especially with this being an Unreal Engine, to track down the names and, you know, all that of different things. I have honestly never been real great at that, so I don't tend to do it. I'm a little curious to see. Well, if ESI is still our right base here. I bet the 
this is it. Yeah. So one thing we can do is do a break and trace from here. Actually, this is kind of a long function. Let's go with 2,000. probably should have saved stack trace um, and another method for doing this kind of thing is to make sure you're actually moving pause and then do your break and trace and make sure again you're trying to move when you come out of pause stack trace information on this one. <coughs> Close that now. Oh wow. Skips a lot of code. I'm not even seeing that original code, so, huh. That's interesting. really yielded the results I wanted. Yeah, I'm not seeing any of our offsets records or nothing. there. Yeah, shoot. I don't know if this is going to work or not. Probably not. Ooh, got something. So zero and one for that one. Probably not what we're looking for, although one could be Photo one wouldn't be that crazy for a multiplier. If the developers didn't ever change it, you know, and that's it's still just moving at the default speed for the engine. Maybe that changes based on whether we're crowd, you know, where it pulls it from.
So definitely one thing we can do. Just to get an idea of what this might do. Copy that address, paste that on in down here. Single. Oh, now that is something completely different. Display, or I don't even know what that was, but probably not moving speed. about this. Maybe we got outside that function too far. Yeah, so I got a bunch of stuff that jumps right in here. It's actually a little weird though, because why wouldn't it jump into there instead? Okay, so we got that instruction at any rate stored. Let's actually just look at this data structure and see what we can figure out on it. main structure we'll call it. I guess that player would be, yeah, let's make it player. But these might not be inside here. It may be something more related to the engine and not the player. Um, so it's actually a little hard to say for sure. But we know these are our chords. Change that to just X, C, Y. And so a lot of times, um, just looking at this kind of thing, we can kind of move around a little bit here and see if we can find some floats that are changing. And that would be going back and forth between zero and some value that would kind of correspond to how we're moving. Because those would then be our deltas and that might help us track down where the multiplier actually is. I am actually a little curious about what happens if we modify that one. Yeah, it doesn't really seem to do anything. One thing we can do to kind of help facilitate this is um, at least looking for the deltas because they'll be going, you know, from zero to whatever's changing in our chords. Um, and right now I'm standing still and we're not changing that. So we can do what um, it's called creating a shadow copy. I think now it's got to come up here to add an address. So we can 
add an extra address and then lock this one and it will create a copy that won't change um, and then that way we can run up some stairs here maybe even actually try to make sure I do it kind of diagonally what is going on? Oh, I was getting stuck on the desk um, and then start looking at some of our values here and see if we got three that go from zero to something reasonable with our changing chords We've got some stuff here, but I've only going from. Yeah, let's go back to chords. And, yeah, um, I guess it is a pretty good change. Just running up the stairs a little bit there. So that's not that crazy, but I would expect to see three change within um is definitely a thousand is going to be way too much. Here we're already getting close to health. Yeah, there's our health. So, another method we can use here to try and find at least our deltas is we can go off of working on the idea that, you know, we want to change a chord here. Now, the main one we can control the direction very easily is the Y chord we can know we're going up and then down very easily whereas around here I mean we could do it especially now that we've got chords already we could lock one and then make sure we're only changing in one but to me that can easily get confusing very quickly as far as when I'm going up or down whereas when I'm doing like this it's real easy for me to tell um, you know kind of ingrained into you as far as which is up and which is down and we do see that we're at a negative number here and then we go up the stairs and we go to a positive we actually get a pretty good change even with just little movements um, so we can know that it's going to kind of start at zero now the only catch with scanning for zero for a start value is is it is tends to be very resource intensive um, so I don't tend to do it and I want to say even dark bike tends to discourage that um, he'll tell you usually start with an unknown initial value and then later once we weed some stuff out we can scan for zero and then even compare that to the first scan and make sure it's you know zero but we won't necessarily <laughs> want to start off with a zero scan so here I've started going up the stairs and then I made sure when I paused I was still holding the forward button so we'll go ahead and look for an increase value and we got some of these that are changing constantly here a decrease value now the one catch too is just because we are standing still um, our delta could be changing ever so slightly it may not ever actually get back to zero I would kind of expect it otherwise you would be kind of floating around and doing some goofy stuff but it's hard to say um, shouldn't have changed so we're gonna go ahead and assume that we are coming back to zero
So with floats, um, because of the way the rounding works, a lot of times you actually need to do like 0, 0.0, you know, any number of zeros if you really want to capture true zeros. because it's our deltas, we are looking for a decreased value now. But interestingly enough, ah, that's too many. Yeah, I'm going to go and look for decrease. got a change there because I'm jumping. Oh wow, I cut out everything. May not be going the way I'm thinking it should be or I'm already falling. Yeah, I was already falling. to our coordinates here. Our freezing deltas won't necessarily work. At most you might get it acting a little jittery. This one is closer to our structure, so I would almost kind of expect it to be, you know, at least close. stuff. Probably not it. It's a little interesting. So zero is like a main multiplier here. Zero, that doesn't make 
Could be our multiplier, but unlikely. I'll freeze it and try one more time and just see if we get something. Similar kind of instructions here. All by three and two. Our same address there. Hmm. Yeah, that was the last one we did. So, kind of doubting those are our actual chords. Um, usually, because freezing them won't necessarily have a dramatic effect, but you will kind of get a little jittery behavior because it'll kind of stop you from moving every now and again. Just for clarity, let's just freeze them all one time real quick. Um, and of course, another way to kind of help tell. This is the only one that actually ends in C. Kind of match our other chords. Not necessarily the actual chords. I may have accidentally filtered those out at some point. Okay, so no luck with that. So another thing we can try here. Of course, we can always fall back on injecting here and just modifying these deltas from there. Um, since we know it's actually writing directly to our chords, but I want to try one more thing real quick. Um, so one thing we can notice is like if I move forward, I move forward at one speed. If I move back, I move back at another speed. And then if I crouch, I move at another speed, you know. I think it's about the same as moving backwards. Yeah, it seems like it is, but it definitely slows down from moving forward. So, like while I said, um, some game engines will have different chords for each movement. Um, 
some even though they will have different hard-coded values they'll still have one main multiplier that gets applied and then changes based on what we're doing so one way is just to stand still now let's make sure we walk last walk forward make sure that's the last movement we made go with unknown initial value do our first scan and then just crouch and do an increase or a decrease scan stand back up increase scan This usually does seem more tedious and takes longer at times because it can be a little harder to weed stuff out because we don't actually know for sure that going backwards is the same or any of that. Um, so I can't really scan in that kind of way. But again, what I am looking for is something close within our structure. stand up at night yet. So we've got it down to fourth. Oh, well, let me change that part way through. Oh, that sucks. At any rate, we can still kind of manually do this. And I will expect it to be really close to one not necessarily super far from it. That's an interesting value. I think uh, we're outside of the structure there. Some of these aren't too crazy. Three, you know, I could kind of see that, but I re again, I really expect it to be close to one. That's getting a little too far outside the structure, but we'll go ahead and look at it too. So, so this one, let's copy that value so I can set it back, set that to two. That's kind of in, ooh. It definitely kind of changes as I would expect it, yeah. seeing any change. Let's go and see what accents are there real quick. So we do got one that writes, um, the other two just read. So let's see. Maybe we can do something with this. Okay, so it does read. And it subtracts. Multiplies 2. Adds 0 to 2. Then it moves 2 to 0. Moves that. Loads that. And moves that to there. Stack trace, um, yeah, 100 ought to be enough. Let's 
Let me see what's in that little function there. So it loads that close to 9-0. Obviously we're around in there. Um, loads 0.22. That multiplies that, adds those two together. Move, 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 and then move. I do think when we were striking, it was pretty close to seven two. What that's all about. Well, we kind of get it. And backwards is. So let's just try something here. I'm just curious. too crazy and hide a bunch of stuff. Okay, since we're just testing, I'm not going to get real crazy and type a bunch of stuff up. Um, so we're just going to go with mall SS, mix MM0, our float, change our float to, go and bump it up to two. Like two times speed will just be a lot easier to see. I guess I can go back to Whoa. That is definitely faster. Whoa. <laughs> oh, there it goes. Forward too. Um yeah, it's kind of sporadic. Maybe that we bumped it up so much. What is our actual base on that? ESI. So that way I can actually see what's kind of going on here. Let's say one, two, five. Five, eight, C. And this is in our structure, so we could go and add it up here. I'm just not really worried about doing that just yet. Although now I kind of am. It does definitely seem to be something related to movement speed. I can say that much. Yeah, so that multiplier kind of sticks for a little while, it would seem. I think we're still moving twice as fast. say point nine zero knock it back down a little bit
Yeah, so that just, just have like a drastic change real quick, even though we're technically only going one quarter more than we were before. Um, or, in, well, more one quarter more than default. But we are going half as fast there as the other. So we're definitely speeding up a lot. Let's go ahead and set that to what seemed to be working out. And the reason why I go with uh, multipliers like that is because you'll see that it actually does hold it like that in memory instead of having a you know weird look to it because we actually went like 1.2 it'd be you know like 1.199 something For some reason that doesn't seem okay there we go now we're running again yeah it's still a little wonky Every now and again, it doesn't really work. I don't know. This is one we probably have to play with a little bit. And we can, of course, try and find where where some of that other stuff is coming from. But the way it's calculated, it's not like it's just hard setting it. It's, um, it's actually using some goofy math there to calculate what the movement speed should be. is a little odd. Um, so yeah, let's run and add this to our main structure. So 58C. Actually, I don't want to move that because that's not in the right place. Um, just because that is a flow, we'll start with that one. 58C. like an unmodified one there. I'm wondering if that has something to do with it. Kind of acting a little weird at times. Oh, wow. It's kind of deeply nested in there.
so that's like some kind of generic calculator thing here. Would be my guess, just because we got so much going through it. And they're all, I mean, obviously not all of these are movement speed calculators, but that is our base one there. It's not really going to do us any major favors. Unless we got some way we can distinguish it. And I'm going to say no. We might be able to dig through the structure and find a way, but... But ultimately, we could change that value here. Set it down where we are. This one does seem to be mostly working. I'm ready to get rid of that. Oh, this one okay. Does seem like it kind of gets a little weird at first, but then once you kind of use it and it's enabled for a little bit, I just said that. Sounds like doing something different. Eh? We went upstairs faster there. Yeah. Mostly satisfied with it as long as it doesn't do that too often. I do wish we could break it down a little bit. So that way I could change, but I don't know, that's really not too bad for crouch. I'd say that's a pretty comfortable walk speed there. You know, a little quick, but not super quick. And then that's definitely a nice, fast sprint speed. I like that. Can book it now. I'm striping is a little quick, but this isn't a shooter, so I guess technically it kind of could be, but mostly not. So yeah, I don't know where we're at on time, but um, I'm betting we got pretty far into this because I think we were messing with this one for a little while. So I'm going to mostly call that one done other than I'm going to fix that script a little more. Go ahead and disable that while I'm editing my script here. Um, so one thing, because this one does seem to fire a lot and very quickly I'm not going to be doing any flag checks or any of that it's just going to be a straight multiplier basically what we've already got here and that's about all I'm going to do so yeah I think actually that's done just need to clean it up a little bit get rid of some of the stuff we're not going to be using now we're going to heat those up since we got our value up here already Still have a habit of always calling this kind of thing super speed.
So I think I'm gonna mostly call this one done. Or at least this video done. Um, maybe super jump after this. So those two two tend to go together pretty well. Um, I'll just kind of figure it out from there. Although I think this one does have an ability for like a double jump thing and I just haven't unlocked it yet. So that could, I mean, we can definitely get this base jump in there or the um, standard jump in there and kind of see what happens with that. And see how it's gonna be affected by the double jump. At least I'm pretty sure game does have a double jump. Yeah. Now it increases jump height, but it doesn't say anything about a double jump. I don't know. It's been a while since I played this game. I don't remember all that there is. like it doesn't show all of the levels. Here we got everything disabled now. So change the speed to get it to start working. Probably gonna have to play with that one some more and see if I can't figure something else out. We might come back to this one, but it's just that it is mostly working. That's right, I can kill people. <laughs> oh, we got a little. Oh, no, I don't want to slow that one. Actually, let's go ahead and delete that one. <laughs> God, I love games. Oh, that's still bloody. That right, I should have spawned down there. Okay, um, yeah, we'll, we'll call this video kind of done. Maybe you can try and get like an attack speed thing going. Oh, I almost swear that's kind of, feels like it's quicker. Nah. And we'll go from there and I'll see you on the next one.